Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Tesla is playing game theory. All the legacy competition are running around like headless chickens. They don't know what path to take. They don't know where to invest. They don't know the technology or how the future is meant to be played out. They don't have the best engineers to help either. What they do have, however, is a roadmap. Well, more a breadcrumb trail from Tesla. Everyone will be trailing behind Tesla because they're leading the way. Mainly because they got there 10 years earlier than everyone else and understand the game better and know what the true objectives of being a successful EV company requires. The rest are still trying to work it out at great expense too. The question is, are they capable of achieving it before they lose solvency? Anyway, as the competition are looking to Tesla as guidance as to where to take their company and what is the correct path. For example, they all seem to be on the LiDAR path for self-driving at the moment, whereas Tesla is going by vision. But actually, I'm mainly referring to batteries and EV manufacturing processes. So as everyone is looking for guidance, if Tesla zigs, they zig. If Tesla zags, they zag. Well, not instantly, usually about five years after Tesla perhaps. But anyway, this does put Tesla in a unique opportunity. I suspect that as much as Elon encourages legacy autos going electric, that he most likely would rather they all went bankrupt. Not just for his own personal gains or Tesla's either, but actually to hasten the transition to renewable energy. Well, Tesla can play game theory now. Tesla can try and make out what the important elements of running an EV business are, and the competition will jump to it only to discover they were misdirected down the wrong path and it ended up costing them billions of dollars or even more. The competition are desperate and will eat up any breadcrumb Tesla throws them, or at least you might think, except they still aren't making any progress. Nothing about structural battery packs or die cast molds. I start talking about these things sometimes and I put myself in the position of the executives at these companies and they must just not be able to get a clue. And even if they did finally decide on a path, the execution is just going to be so difficult whilst trying to run an ice company. And any investments are going to take a long time and cost an absolute fortune. Anyway, the competition aren't even close to what Tesla's were doing years and years ago. But now Tesla can make out certain things are the way to invest. For example, Tesla made a big deal about nickel and securing nickel mines. Then likely all the competition realized that nickel is one of the most scarce elements of the batteries, and they start organizing their nickel supplies, only to be totally distracted, and Tesla end up selling 75% of their cars with LFP batteries anyway, which don't contain any nickel. It sends the competition in the wrong direction. This is the kind of game theory that Tesla is capable of right now. But would it be the same that Tesla doesn't want anyone to know how successful they are? The company's financials are hidden behind making minimal profits only by supposedly regulatory credits and has a really high PE ratio. From the outside, Tesla does not look hugely profitable, but when you get into the details, they're going to be able to make cars with 30 to 40% profit margins, which is hugely profitable, especially for a car. Tesla may be holding back their products with software because they're simply too good. They don't need to sell a better version of it yet. For example, I believe it's a possibility that the Plaid might eventually release a range upgrade later. Why sell a 500 mile range car when enough people are still willing to pay for a 400 mile range car? There's no other competition out there. And Model S was the main vehicle the competition were targeting at first. They saw how well the Model S was doing. So a lot of the competition thought they could simply compete with that. Despite there being the Model 3 coming out soon at the time, which was obviously going to be a much bigger seller, yet everyone thought the battle was the ultra luxury EV sedan market, not the mainstream family sedan market or even the crossover. Of course, it has been too hard for these other brands to offer something comparable at an affordable price, which is perhaps why they enter the luxury sedan market. And Tesla had already gone the same path. Oh, except they also can't offer anything comparable at an inaffordable price either. For this reason, we do have a few other luxury high range EV sedans, such as the Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron GT, 
Mercedes EQS, Neo ET7, and Lucid. Now, they all think they only have about 400 miles of range to beat, as that is what the Tesla long range is capable of. That's the benchmark that's been set. And I think it possible the competition can beat Tesla's 400 miles. But again, I just don't think Tesla would let other competitors beat them on range. This is game theory. So when these other cars come out with ranges in excess of Tesla's, later, Tesla could do an update and give their plaids an option to have over 500 miles of range. The competitors gamed the wrong target. Of course, the competition will have been working on it for some time and they're still not there and they will need to use a lot more batteries in a much heavier car than Tesla will. It's almost mean to make them think they have a chance of beating Tesla's range. This may be a part of how I think Elon sandbags Tesla. Perhaps it's partly game theory for the competition to not let them know just how far along Tesla really are. The ice manufacturers are talking about spending tens of billions of dollars. If they make the wrong decision, it's over for them. All they have is money to throw at this problem. Well, the competition say they will invest this much money, but we don't know whether they have funding secured or not. The fact that Tesla is able to move and adapt so quickly as a company is also a major advantage. Although Tesla's market cap might tower over the incumbent autos, Tesla still remains a much smaller company in manufacturing size. Although this means Tesla manufacture a lot fewer cars than the competition, it also means that they can make changes that much faster. Like with any new idea, for example, Tesla are actually making die-cast molds for the cars with gigapresses. I think this is an amazing achievement. Now, as weight is so important with an EV, eventually the competition might also realize how much benefit you get from die-cast molds. They may invest in their own gigapresses, and then perhaps in a few years' time, they're also able to produce their own molds. Except by that stage, Tesla has found the next solution. Perhaps the entire shell of the car is now one die-cast mold. But the legacy autos are just getting to the grips of the previous die-cast molds. They're not going to be able to adapt. They're going to always be stuck with old technology and old processes because they can't move fast enough and can't lead the way. There is such a delay in everything they do, it's not exactly the way to keep up. One problem for them is that this isn't really a tech industry, it's manufacturing. In tech, if Snapchat or Twitter come out with some new great feature, then Facebook can have it copied in a few months. It's just code. But when a car company announces they're now using die-cast molds, well, then that takes a little longer to copy. But this is the problem they suffer. The fact for one, manufacturing takes so long, and two, that the legacy auto decision-making process also takes so long, that by the time they finally catch up, well, Tesla is likely done with that technique and moved on to something much more profitable, faster, and better for the environment. But the legacy autos are already committed to what they have invested in. And remember, they spend money like it's going out of fashion, or at least compared to how Tesla spends money. Put it this way, you get a lot more from a billion dollars in Tesla R&D than you do GMs. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.